Welcome, everybody. Hey, hey. <laughs> Good boy, Tucker. Work smarter where you want. This is learning at its most fun. All right, guys. Well, it is top of the hour. So let's go ahead and get started with today's content. Thank you so much for joining us. This is a best practice partner spotlight. If this is the first time you join us for one of these, it's Redtail's opportunity to connect with one of our partners to discuss a best practice through our integration together. So today I have Charlotte from FMG Suite, and we are going to teach you how to source better leads using FMG Suite and Redtail. So as an advisor, we know that it's important to know where good leads come from, and we can actually leverage this information inside our communications with our prospects to help gain new business. And so that's the idea today. We're going to teach you about the importance of having a digital presence and using multiple channels in your marketing practice, again, in order to better leverage your prospects and communicate with them more effectively. I would like to introduce you all to Charlotte from FMG Suite. Good morning, Charlotte. Good morning. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Before we jump to our content, I just wanted to get to know a little bit more about you. So tell us, what was your journey like into this industry and what do you enjoy working with advisors? Yes. Um, yeah. So I spent many years um, uh, working as a marketing sort of uh, person, strategist, uh, a freelancer working for small businesses of all kinds. So I really got to know sort of the pain points of people who, you know, started a business because they were passionate about that type of business, but not necessarily about marketing. So I would take over those tasks for them. And that led me to FMG Suite where same thing, I really enjoy being able to help people out, show them the tips and tricks that are really going to make a difference for their business. And I really enjoy doing these webinars because it's, you know, sometimes I'm just writing blogs and doing things, but being able to really get questions, you get chat and really feel like I'm making a difference and, and helping everyone out uh, makes me feel good. So that's where I'm at. Awesome. And tell us a little bit about FMG Suite. What is FMG Suite and what kind of service does it provide for advisors? Yeah, FMG Suite is an all-in-one digital marketing platform for financial professionals. Um, from one place, you can log in and we have websites. We have tools to send emails and send social media posts. It's all powered by our massive content library that covers the, the gamut. You know, we uh, are putting out weekly timely emails about, you know, something that President Biden just passed, or we've got an article about golf tips that you can, you know, share out via social media. And we also have tools for blogging, for hosting events, um, for sending out greeting cards, pretty much everything that you need for marketing. It's all available in one place from FMG Suite. Wow. That's like you guys do quite a bit of stuff for advisors. It's almost like a one-stop shop. Absolutely. Yes. And we couldn't do it without our integration with Redtail. Of course. of course. Of course. So our question for you today, Charlotte, is let's pretend for a second here that I'm, I'm a financial advisor. And for the most part, I kind of just rely on referrals, you know, a good, the good word of mouth to gain new prospects or, or new clients for my, for my practice. What would you say to me as that advisor, uh, if I asked you the question, why do I need a digital presence? Why do I need to invest money in, into my website or to use a marketing platform like FMG Suite to build a digital presence online to kind of use those channels to gain more business for myself? Absolutely. Even if you are getting a majority of your new business from referrals and you're we're happy with those referrals that are coming in, um, it's important to remember that a referral, especially you know in, mod in modern times in the digital age, especially if it's a referral who's maybe a younger person, they are going to want to check you out online before they make any sort of steps. I mean, I personally do that anytime there's a, a plumber or a restaurant or really any new business I want to engage with, I'm going to look them up online and your referrals are going to want to do that too. So they're going to want to look you up. They're going to see that you have a great website that answers their questions that, you know, gets, helps them get to know you a little bit. And it's really helpful when you build out your whole online presence um, with social media and the sending nurture emails. So that on the one hand, if you do get a referral who maybe is not quite ready to become a client or just maybe need some time to get to know you a little better, they can get those emails from you. They can see you on social media. And let's say your referrals do start to dry up. You know, it's not an endless well necessarily by starting now with, or with new more marketing uh, efforts, you're going to be able to replace those referrals and still see new leads, uh, even as you might run out of referrals. 
Okay, Charlotte. Well, I, I think I think you make a good case. I, I think you might even say I, I'm convinced. I think those okay. are all important points. So tell us how how do I even start with this multi-channel marketing strategy? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I would be happy to show you. Uh, can I take the screen? Absolutely. Okay. Let's do it. So yes. Hello. So yes, we are going to be talking about using multi-channel marketing. So I wanted to show you a couple stats that sort of back up what I was saying and sort of talk about how can you get started with this concept. So first of all, 81% of consumers conduct, conduct online research before purchasing. So just like I said, everyone's looking people up online before they do business, even if it's an, your top client referred on one of their greatest friends who is really excited about working with you, they're going to check you out online first. 75% uh, of B2B buyers say that website content significantly impacts their buying decision. So making sure your site not only has, you know, your contact information and, you know, a little blurb about you, it really helps educate uh, your prospects and your customers on the topics that they have questions about. And 79% of consumers prefer digital channels for financial interactions. I'll say too, I don't have the stats off the top of my head, but Putnam just did or JD Power and Associates, excuse me, just did a survey where they asked investors how they want to hear, uh, how they want to talk with their advisor. And younger clients had a much higher percentage of people who do prefer to, to communicate via digital channels. So that would be email and social media um, and their website. So the demand is absolutely growing. And when I'm talking about multi-channel marketing, like what exactly do I mean? I mean, all the different ways that you could be communicating with your clients and your prospects and that a new client or lead could come in. So that's social media, that's brochures, that's paid search, your website, your physical office, uh, maybe not exactly right now, but in a few months, physical office, uh, email, maybe radio, TV, direct mail, social media. Um, it's really across the board and I'm not saying that we're going to talk, we're not going to cover all these today and I'm not saying you've got to do all of these right now, but these are some ideas to sort of inspire you as we talk about this. Uh, and I want to just back this up a little bit more that multi-channel does work. We surveyed a bunch of financial advisors and uh, we asked what channels are they often using in their marketing. 78% are often using email, 69% often using their websites. 60% using social media and actually 46% using online advertising. So if you're not in this often bucket, maybe you're in the rarely or even never, uh, consider that your competitors are probably using these things. So, you know, if, if you have one person who's looking into two different advisors, maybe they get on the email list for one and they're getting a bunch of emails from someone else in your community, they're probably gonna turn to that person just cause that, that other advisor seems really involved, seems really educated. Um, it is providing them a lot of great resources. And if you're not providing that same level of communication, you might lose out. Your multi-channel marketing really starts with your website. Your website then is the hub for everything. You're gonna drive people back to your website when you share on email. You're gonna drive people back to your website when you share on social media. Your website is, is your online presence. It's that best first impression that you can create. So as I said, kind of the same stats from before, but 97% of consumers go online to find small businesses. 56% of people don't trust a business without a website. And 75% admit to judging a company's credibility based on web design, which is kind of harsh, hard to take, right? You think, well, they should wanna work with me because I, you know, I'm a certified CFP and I know my stuff. It shouldn't matter whether my, what my website looks like, but unfortunately it does. So when you're starting this multi-channel marketing, you wanna make sure your website looks as, as great as it can and has all the tools that you need to really power this marketing. So it needs to be mobile friendly and responsive. Um, a huge percentage of traffic these days is coming to your website via people on their phone or on their tablet, not on their desktop. So your website's gotta look great from all devices. It needs to be modern and well-designed because as we said, people are judging your site if it doesn't look great and if it doesn't feel modern. Um, you know, I think the same idea that you're going to go to a site and if it looks like it hasn't been updated in 10 years, that might tell me that, oh, this advisor isn't maybe very, um, you know, isn't in tune with, with what's going on in the industry or maybe isn't taking that time to really care for, for their clients if they're sort of ignoring their digital presence. Again, it sounds harsh, but that's me as a consumer. That's how I would feel. Uh, you also want to have lead capture tools, which is a huge part of what we're going to be talking about with Austin in a little bit, this integration with Redtail, having forms on your site so that people can become a lead without having to pick up the phone 
is absolutely a necessity in, in the digital age. Your website should also have a clearly articulated value proposition so that when a stranger comes to your site and they don't know you at all, you help answer those questions and they can get to know you um, just from looking at your website and your website's got to set you apart. Again, there's lots of advisors out there. So what can you do on your website to really show your personality, show what the unique offerings you have, uh, really speak to your ideal client. Just want to show you a couple examples of what I'm talking about when it comes to creating a, a standout website. This is a pretty modern looking design. Um, they speak pretty clearly about what it is that they offer and with some content that's pretty specific to the value that they offer, how to retire early. That might be a niche audience that they um, really like to work with, this faux advisor site. Uh, they have an image of their ideal clients. Maybe they prefer to, to work with, uh, with retirees who have families who are wanting to preserve their wealth. Uh, and then a button to get people to learn more that ideally would take them to something like this, a form to download an ebook perhaps that's going to give them a resource and give you a lead. Um, I want to show you kind of what that looks like in real life real quick. It's actually one of our customers. So I think this is a pretty good example. She clearly works with women. So it's very specifically at the, at the, at the top here about working with women to build their wealth. She's got, you know, the services that they offer, a video, which is great, and speaks to her. She has sort of two niches that she covers here, and she's got pictures of her team, so that helps show that personality. You know right away who it is you'd be working with. And then here she has a quiz about how much do you know about investing. So as a prospect, that's a great way for me to say, oh, okay, let's, let me kind of get to know this person. Let me test this out. Maybe I'm not ready to make an appointment yet, but this is a nice in-between step. So once you've built out your website, now it's this multi-channel idea of how do you promote your website? How do you engage with your network um, using different marketing channels? So today, what I'm gonna cover is email, social media, and website content. Just some basic ways that I would suggest you use these channels and a few tips. Email is huge, right? I mean, as we saw before, a huge percentage of advisors are often using email. Um, but if you're using email and you don't really feel like it's very effective for you, uh, I have some tips that hopefully will change that. And this also is it gonna be impacted greatly by the fields you're able to utilize in Redtail. So it's really important that when you're creating your contact lists, uh, when you're creating your contacts in your CRM, that you are as clear in your labeling and adding tag groups and really being as specific as you can in each contact, because that's gonna make your marketing easier, which we'll show you. So you wanna label, are they a client or are they a prospect? Um, are they you know, of, of different age groups? Do they have some different professions if you have some niches that you serve? Uh, maybe if you have a few select group of people who are, you know, massive sports fans or have kids who are, you know, going to want to be going to be applying to college in the next few years, as many groups as you can think of to be segmented in your CRM is going to make your email really powerful. I would say once you've segmented that to all your clients or all your prospects or just your whole list, you want to send a regular email newsletter. That just gives people a little bit update on you and what your firm has been up to and then provide some, some relevant resources, maybe an article that you want them to share, maybe it's a blog or an email that you created. Uh, it's also fun to share something that's a little more specific, maybe to your community. So maybe if there's a community event going on near you, you'd like to share or if there's a, a local restaurant near you that you want to give a shout out to. So doing a mix of things like that to draw attention and to be both personal, but also sharing that financial knowledge. And then also utilizing automated campaigns. Obviously, you're an advisor, you're not a marketer, you don't have time to sit there and write a bunch of emails all day long. Uh, so using that mix of some personal content and some automated uh, campaigns, which I'll show you how to use in FMG Suite, is going to make sure that you're, you're staying top of mind with your prospects and with your clients all year round. So the, I kind of covered these tips, but as I said, segmenting your audience in your CRM in Redtail is huge. Creating lots of tag groups and really getting specific in how you label uh, your contacts is gonna make marketing a lot easier. Keeping that contact list, contact list updated is really important. Um, you know, the last thing you want is someone to get an email that you know, just isn't appropriate to them. So if someone you know, moves on from you or, or, or passes away, you know, making sure all that is updated is really important. As I said, including a mix of personal and professional messaging is really important. I think with marketing for financial advisors, 
you have to remember that an a client is going to choose to work with you, of course, because you have the knowledge and the expertise that you're looking for, but also because they connect with you on a personal basis. So there's something about you that they like more than the other advisors. So really, you know, being clear about your passions, you know, talking about your family, if you have a family and that's important to you, if you're a big runner, you know, there might be someone who is a runner and they're going to say, oh, well, I'd rather work with an advisor who's also a runner or whatever that is. So don't be afraid to to, to really show your personality of yourself and of your whole firm. You know, I think including in your newsletter that someone got a new puppy or someone moved or, or someone got a pet or even, you know, a funny picture of someone's, you know, baby and they've got food all over themselves or whatever that might be. I think it can go a really long way in helping to really relate with your clients. At the end of the day, your goal with your email marketing is always to drive traffic back to your website because when you do that, you'll hope that they're gonna then, you know, fill out a form and become a new client or send a referral or just engage with you even more. Um, and uh, to back this up, 78% of prospects of personal content from an advisor increases their intent to engage. So having you know, those segmented lists and using that to power really personalized marketing by creating emails that are specific to people's interests or adding them to campaigns that are relevant to their interests and to their needs is gonna go really far. The other channel I want to talk about is social media. Obviously, that's a huge one, and that's only getting more and more popular. You want to make sure that you fully fill out your profiles on the, your preferred platforms, which we would recommend LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Think about those as sort of a subset of your website. So they should have a great image. They should have all updated, accurate contact information, a nice bio. You know, think about it. Some people might come first to your Facebook page. And if your Facebook page doesn't look nice, they might not go to your website and then fill out that form and then become a customer. So make sure that those look awesome. Really post regularly. Kind of the same thing with keeping your website updated. If I go to someone's social media page and I see they haven't posted in three years, that might sort of make me reconsider. It might make me feel like, oh, well, they don't really care about this. So maybe they wouldn't care about me as a client. So being consistent with your social media presence slowly building your audience. It's important not to get too stressed about building a social media audience and having like, you know, a million followers right away. It's a slow process, but the more you post, the more you tell your clients, hey, we're on Facebook, hey, we're on LinkedIn, you should check out the articles we're sharing there, the more followers you'll get and stay engaged. That's sort of my number one tip for social media is that you've got to be social. It's not just about posting links and leaving it behind. If people comment, comment back if you're able to you know share posts from your personal page or share them into groups or community pages just engaging as much as you can either as your individual advisor or as your firm's business page um, that's going to go really far and by posting more and by posting things that go back to your website same thing people are going to start following you they'll see the articles that you share via either custom posts or maybe some automated campaigns from fmg suite or whatever marketing tool you use they're gonna to come to your site, they're gonna fill out that form, and they're gonna continue that journey of getting nurtured by you and hopefully becoming a new customer. I covered these, but uh, uh, one tip I always have for social media is using a mix of content. So you're just always posting articles and that's it, and you're not getting a ton of engagement. Try posting just photos. Same idea of email, doing a mix, so being personal. Sharing, sharing what happened in your office, sharing a profile of an employee, sharing some news, sharing something from your community, uh, that's going to go really far. People don't just go on social media because they want to read about their 401k. You know, they go because they, they want to see their friends and their family. So do what you can to have your business page sort of emulate a friend or a family of theirs that also happens to have a lot of knowledge about finance. <laughs> Add images and video and photos, same thing. So just try different things, you know, try posting a video on there, try posting just photos, try posting a sort of graph, maybe you graphic you make that has a quote on it or something. Get creative. That's why I think social media is fun. It's important to remember it's meant to be social. It's meant to be experimental. Um, so it doesn't always have to be perfect. Of course, I know that social, you know, is can be held up by compliance. So that's obviously something you'll need to work with your own individual compliance department to understand. But I will say a tip is that by doing more personal content and things that are less focused on finance, you might be able to post more frequently because that's not something that would get stopped by your compliance department. And as we're talking about lead generation and, and getting new contacts, advertising might be something that you wanna consider. It's a whole other topic I'm not gonna super get into today. Um, we could talk about it for hours, but 
putting a little bit of money behind your posts on, on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter um, is going to help you reach new people who wouldn't normally see it. Uh, you don't have to spend a ton of money in order to get new leads, but it can really pay off. So that's one idea if you're really looking to sort of take your social media to the next level. And again, always drive traffic back to your website. What blogs or links you can share so that people uh, people come back and fill out that form. Heather is asking a great question. She asks, is there any way when posting a video on social media that I can automatically play while someone's scrolling through versus they have to click on it and watch on the website? Yes. Um, so if you want someone to watch the, social, the video right on your social media page, um, for most platforms, including FMG Suite, it's actually recommended that you just go directly to Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn and upload the video there. That way you're able to customize the, the thumbnail. You can add captions through there. Um, so if you upload it directly onto those platforms, you'll be able to see it. I don't know if there's some compliance um, hiccups with that. So you'll have to work with your individual team, but that's how you can have it automatically play. But there's, you know, it's really not, not nothing wrong with, with posting a video on your website and then sharing it that way. Um, because you can make it so the thumbnail is makes it clear it's a video so people will click through and watch it on your website. But yep, you can it's kind of up to you if you want to have the video on your social media pages or on your website. So one more channel I want to talk about, which is a really great way of bringing people to your site, which is content marketing. So that's having custom or custom content on your website, whether that's your about page, your services page, your home page, plus a blog. That is huge for SEO meaning search engine optimization. So if you want people to be able to find you just by searching for, you know, retirement for nurses in San Diego or whatever it is that you offer, having that custom uh, content that you've written specifically for your website is huge. That's what's going to help people find you. This is particularly important if you do serve a niche or if you serve a specific community and think about, okay, people are probably looking for whatever this specific thing is that I offer. So how can I write about that on my website so people find it? You can post a monthly blog, you can create videos and put it on your site's maybe site. Maybe you do a webinar uh, that you promote on your site and then you share the replay on your website. You can have eBooks, which FMG actually creates for you, which you've seen a little bit, um, but lots of ways that you can write something. And I know that writing is also not probably a skill that you have. And so outsourcing is, is a great way to do it. You never know, I would ask around, you might have someone in your office who really does like writing. And you could say, hey, I want to write a blog about five things that you need to know to retire as a nurse. You could give them some ideas and then let them kind of fill in the blanks. Posting a monthly blog about a really specific topic that your clients are asking about is a really awesome idea if you're ready to take your marketing to the next level and you're really interested and motivated in reaching new leads or in warming up those referrals. Same thing, try using different mediums, using video, using uh, different, uh, different new ways of communicating is a great way to think outside the box. And uh, thinking about SEO, so really thinking about what is it that people are searching for, and let's say it is retirement from nurses in San Diego, using that keyword throughout your blog. Again, SEO is a whole other topic I'm not really gonna get into today, but I will say at fmgsuite.com resources, we have a ton of uh, resources about SEO, about paid search advertising, paid social media advertising. So you can dig in a little bit deeper if there's anything that I talk about that you wanna learn more about. When you have great content marketing, on, great content on your site, that's where you wanna add a form, maybe for a relevant ebook or a have a question form, which is something we have uh, available. So then you're gonna say people are gonna read that article and then you have a form right there, boom, they can say, I want to know more about XYZ, then you've got that contact in there, which brings me to, in a second, Austin. And I didn't cover these other channels, but I just want to say that these are obviously also really powerful channels for advisors, hosting events, getting referrals, as we talked about, doing online advertisements. So however it is you're doing your marketing and you're able to capture that lead, let's tell them what's next, Austin. Yes, definitely. So there's so many channels, right? There's, I mean, this is all great great advice, Charlotte, and I'm, I'm excited to go implement it myself um, on some of the channels that we have. But the point that you just made there at the end is, is the list goes on and on and on, right? There's so many different sources where contacts can come from. And so how do we keep track, right? How do we know which sources are better than others, which ones could use some improvements, which ones are working really well, et cetera. And so that is where Redtail can actually come in 
and help you with that is making the assessment, which sources are working for you. And then also what we could do is we could take the information about the sources and we can actually leverage that in our campaigns. Because for example, a person that meets us on our website is gonna be a lot different than a person that was referred to us versus a person that came to one of our seminars versus another person that commented on our social media post, right? And so where the contact come from kind of has a lot to play into how we actually communicate with that person going forward. So that's what I wanna show you today. And I'm gonna do it in the context of the integration that exists between FMG Suite and Redtail. So let's check it out. Okay, so I'm gonna slide over here into my Redtail database. And the first point of integration that I wanna show you between Redtail and FMG Suite is what's called our single sign-on feature. So let's pretend it's middle of your day, right? And you're doing your thing in Redtail, you're putting in client notes, you're setting up your calendar, you're working through your workflows. And now it's time to transition our focus. We're gonna focus on marketing and we need to go over in FMG Suite. Of course, I could open a new tab and go to fmgsuite.com and put in my username and my password. Oh crap, I forgot my, use, my password, let me reset it. Okay, now I'm in FMG Suite, right? It's kind of a long process. Instead, what we have is this thing called a single sign-on feature that allows for you to go to the integrations button here and choose FMG Suite and just click on single sign-on. No username, no password, no typing in any websites, Boom, look at that. I'm right here on my FMG Suite dashboard, right from Redtail. Okay, and then from here, I also wanna show off another point of integration that exists between Redtail and FMG Suite, and that is through your FMG Suite website. So here I'm gonna click on website and I'm gonna click preview website. And it's going to take you to the worst example of a website uh, that I followed none of Charlotte's advice here, guys. I mean, obviously, FMG Suite has done a good job of, of kind of getting me there close, but this website has a lot of work to do. But what I want to show you is for training purposes, just this contact field. So just like the good example that Charlotte showed us on our web, on the advisor's website that focuses on, on empowering women, we have a contact form here on the website. And this contact form is important to know, it's actually hooked up into Redtail. So if somebody visits my website and they put their information here into this contact field, it's actually going to create a contact in Redtail. So for example, let's say um, one of my favorite musical artists was on my website here and they went ahead and put in their information. So Kenny came to my website and uh, you know he's got a investment opportunity coming up and he wants my advice on it. So his question today is, should I invest in Margaritaville? Okay, so he wants to know, should I invest in Margaritaville? And so he sends this question to me on my website. As soon as he hits that submit button through the power of APIs, this contact has just been created inside Redtail. Let me show you. So if we go over here to our Redtail database, all we got to search for is Kenny's name here. There he is. And so we can see that his email address, his first and last name, his question, and also he's been tagged with the tag group for um, FMG Suite. I guess that one didn't quite work for me there. But you're going to basically be able to see this contact now existing inside Redtail. Now, the next step that I want to encourage you guys to do is I want you to start tracking the sources. So just like Charlotte talks about all these different channels, I think it's important for us to put in where are these contacts coming from. And so if I go to this contact detail section here, we can go ahead and edit, and I'm going to fill in some information. So for source, I'm going to put in that Kenny came in from my website, because the way I communicate somebody who met me on my website is different than how if they met me at a seminar or if they were a referral or if they interacted with me on social media, right? And so I'm gonna specifically put that in as a website source. And then I might also list here that Kenny is now a prospect because he's engaged with me and I'll put him under the hot category because this is a prospect that I think is, in, is not only engaging me, but it's someone that I really wanted to capture their business. So I'll update those contact details and that creates this field in Redtail. Now, another point I wanted to highlight about this source field is this list here is entirely customizable by you. So whatever channels that you determine that you'd like to use, just like Charlotte taught us today, there's lots of them. We can actually customize this list 
to build all of our different channels. So for example, here, let's go to our name, choose the manage your account section, and come on down to this spot here called manage database list. Now, keep in mind, you gotta be a database admin in order to make this change. But again, I'm under my name, manage your account, and manage database lists. So if I find my sources list here on the right-hand side, I can go ahead and edit, delete, or add to any sources that I want to start tracking. So just click that add button, put in the name of the source, and then that becomes an available source option that I can begin tracking. So it's not, it's so, it, you know, putting a ton of money into our website or using social media campaigns, you know, maybe hiring somebody for external content, there's, there's expenses that come along with that. And so we want to make sure that we're using our resources wisely. And so source becomes an valuable way to do that. And so how do I find, you know, how my sources are performing? Well, I can use the advanced search tool in Redtail. So I'm going to head over to the contacts tab here on the left-hand side. And we are going to do a search to see how many prospects we've been generating from our website. So if I go to my advanced search, I'm going to search for contacts with the source equal to website. Contact source equal to website. And by clicking this green run button here, Redtail is going to search through all of the contacts in my database, and it's going to find the ones that have specifically been labeled source. And again, you could do this for any of your sources in your multi-channel marketing practice. So for example, if I wanted to see how are my Facebook ads doing, right? I can run a search for that and see how are my Facebook ads performing. But here on this website, now what I want to do is I got three hot prospects here that I want to go ahead and leverage to put into FMG Suite to begin marketing further with them. And again, we're gonna use this source here because that is going to affect the way that we communicate. And this seems like such a simple thing, right? Like it's just curating your marketing materials based off of where contacts come from. Now, I bet you'd be surprised to know that not very many advisors are actually doing this. In fact, in 2019, Redtail did a survey and we found out that nearly half of advisors aren't tailoring any of their communications to their prospects. It's just a blanket bulk send out to all of their prospects. They're not actually getting specific and curating how they communicate with them. Now, what about those other half? Well, the other half of advisors that are tailoring their communications, they're not very frequently getting past things like basic gender, age, or income, right? There's so many things that we can drill into and to leverage, again, the different things that make our audience is unique, just like Charlotte gave examples earlier on, but we're just not doing it. And so what we want to encourage you today is to use the power of both Redtail and FMG Suite to, again, curate your campaigns to specifically meeting the interests, the sources, um, and, and other important contact information in your marketing communication. So let's do this. Let's take these three records here that I've gotten from my website, and I'm actually going to make a campaign with them in FMG Suite. And to do that, I'm going to need the power of tag groups. So what I'll do is I'll take these three contacts that came in from my website. I'll choose contact options, and I'm going to choose the bulk actions icon. Let me do it one more time. Select the contacts, contact options, bulk actions. And from the bulk actions menu, this third option here allows me to create a tag group. And what I'm doing is I'm packaging these three contacts together. And so that way, when I go over to FMG Suite, I can specifically add these three contacts to a specific campaign. So I'm going to put this in here as website leads and create that as a new tag group. And so just by doing that, that group now has made its way over into FNG Suite, where I can go ahead and create a customized campaign based off of the fact that these leads came in from my website. So Charlotte, can I pass it back to you? And you can show us how to make a campaign inside FNG Suite? Yes. Yes, indeed. Okay. So 
And I see there's some more questions in here too. So people are asking about a bunch of questions about how do you know that someone has filled out the form? I'm going to show you that first really quick. So someone was on um, your website and they filled out that form and they've become a contact. How do you know that someone's filled out a form? Um, you actually, oops, okay, so you'll get an email. So this is my email. So I had someone fill out a form and they did a contact us and it gave me the what form they did and what their question was and their information. And also if someone fills out an ebook, they, oh no, that's this one, sorry. Sorry, you're seeing inside my, my scary email. Uh, this is, so if someone signed up for an ebook, you get an email that says which ebook they signed up for. So that makes it really easy to then go, let's say everyone who, who downloads the common tax errors to avoid, you can go into Redtail and add all those people to a tag group so you know everyone who downloaded that thing. So that's how you find out. And also when you're logged in to your dashboard, this is what the FMG Suite dashboard looks like. You come up here to inbox and you'll see all your contact requests in here and then um, you can view it. So it's a, so you see kind of the same thing. So you can see what their question was. Um, you can mark it as read or not read and you can see the, the ebooks information. So all that comes up both into your inbox and to your email. And so once you've got those contacts come in, um, the easiest way to start marketing to them is these automated campaigns, as I talked about. So we have a whole bunch at FMG Suite. Uh, one of the most common ones to do and what is great to send to all of your contacts is a birthday email. So all you have to do is turn it on. If you have the package that includes birthday emails, you hit configure and then you can choose. You can either send it to all your contacts or you can send it to groups. Um, so you can pick your tag groups that you want to send it to. Maybe you only want to send it to your clients or you only want to send it to your prospects, but something like this, I think it probably makes sense to send it to everybody. So you can send it to all. So plus if you have it set up to all, every time you get a new contact from your site, they will automatically get added into this campaign because they're a new contact of yours. So you don't have to go in and add them to that. As soon as they become a new contact, they'll start getting those emails. But maybe um, you want to do this pre-retirement uh, primer campaign that we have. For this, maybe you do want to pick some groups and you want to send it just to um, your clients that you've tagged are really retirement focused or in that age group, or you only want to send it to your prospects. So you can choose uh, how specific you want to get. And we also have something, so if you don't, if you are thinking these automated ones aren't what you like, or you've already turned them on, another tool that we've added really recently is um, they are uh, email sequences that you can edit. And so we've created these sequences that cover um, a bunch of different sort of, uh, you know, common, let me find them. We have some that nurture prospects. We have some that address clients. Here we go. So client relationship nurturing email sequence. They are a series of emails. It's four emails that are already all written out. You can choose how often you want them to send and you, get to customize it as you like. So you could change the copy if you want. Um, if you don't edit them, um, they should be able to move through compliance. They should be already compliance approved if they're in here. Same thing with our automated campaigns. Um, but if you choose you wanna edit them or, or change how often, um, you can do that. Uh, you could add a different image, you could add a video, you could do whatever you want. Same thing and you can choose if you wanna send it to a group or you wanna send it to an individual. So those will automatically go and uh, you can set them up. So for the next, you know, for the next six months or four months, you've got emails going out. I wanna take a look and see what questions we have. Um, okay, I wanna yeah. take a slight step backward in about setting these campaigns because someone's asking, how do I integrate FMG Suite and Redtail? Excellent question, Heather, let me show you. So if you are already an FMG Suite customer and you're in here, you are gonna go to email and then contacts. And once you have your contacts, um, well, I'm already I'm already down here, so I should have, I don't know how to do the baking show version of this, or it's not quite yet done, but you would hit this little button and it'll say all the options that you have to, to integrate with, um, with whatever CRM you have. So right there, it'll say integrate with Redtail, and then it'll take you through, you'll, inter, you'll log into your Redtail account via here and it will all be synced. I believe it's a pretty continuous sync, um, the Redtail and FMG Suite 
integration. So as soon as you get a new uh, contact, they should go back and forth. Um, but if you ever have issues where people are not integrating properly or contacts are getting lost, please, please contact our service teams kind of for either our teams work together pretty well. They're well, well aware of any, you know, problems that might come up. So you just contact service and they'll figure out where that contact is or if there's any bugs that are happening. So please, please help uh, contact us if we want to help you. So yeah, Charlotte, you can actually also uh, turn on the integration on the red tail side as well. So if you wouldn't mind, I can show yeah. that too. Yeah. Um, just in case if you are a red tail user and you want to set up that integration, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to your name in the top right hand corner and choose the manager integrations option name manager integrations. From here, you'll go ahead and make sure that FMG suite is turned on, which is good that we need to practice this. So I go to this disabled section here and I'm going to make sure that FMG suite here is turned to the on section. Once it's turned on, you're going to choose this little settings wheel next to it, and you're going to choose the option that says settings. Okay, so we turn it on, we choose settings, and then I'm going to have to bring it over here to the screenshots, which is right here. Okay, and so what it's going to ask you to do is to log into your FMG Suite account. So you put your username and password in, that is for FMG Suite, and then Redtail is going to ask you, do you want to sync all of your Redtail contacts or just specific groups? So in the example that we just showed, we made a specific tag group that we are going to sync over into, into FMG Suite. So you can kind of choose which ones that you want to sync over. And you can also choose the settings option here that says, let me zoom in a little bit here so you can see it better. It says automatically sync with Redtail Serum at the end of the day. What that means is, say, for example, you add a new contact into your Redtail database, or maybe you put a contact into a specific group. At the end of the day, Redtail and FMG Suite are actually going to communicate to each other and either add that person to your FMG Suite contacts or that group in FMG Suite. So you kind of have two integration options here. You can either send all of your contacts, or you can do groups like, for example, maybe you just want to use FMG Suite for prospects, not necessarily your clients, or maybe you want to just use clients, not necessarily prospects you have the power to control. I would of course encourage you to say more is better, right? Use the power. It's good for both clients and prospects. So send over your contacts, but again, you have the control on what you want to do. And then once they're there, again, just like Charlotte showed, you're gonna to go to FMG Suite and choose the contact section and there you'll see the contacts information. I will also say one more thing that is important as far as the syncing goes is, if you want to sync a contact from Redtail into FMG Suite, you're going to want to make sure that that contact has an email address and that email address is marked as primary. Now, thankfully, when we do the integration from our website, we already take care of that for you. But if you were to manually add in a contact here, you're going to want to make sure that they have an email address and their email address is marked as primary. That is an important condition to make sure that that contact makes its way over into FMG Suite, whether it's in a group or syncing all of the contacts. Thanks so much for joining us today for this particular session. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call at 800-206-5030, option three for support, or just shoot us an email over to support at redtailtechnology.com. Thanks a lot and have a great day.